In this Blender tutorial, I'll guide you through importing image stacks, or 3D images such as confocal microscopy or MRI scans. Unfortunately, right now, Blender doesn't handle 3D data formats directly. So prior to this tutorial, you will have to transform your TIFF data into a video file, where each frame of that video corresponds to a layer of your image stack. Now, this can be easily done with either ImageJ or Python. If you have multiple channels, prepare a separate video file for each one. Now in Blender, let's jump straight into geometry nodes. First we add a grid, increase the number of vertices, and these will be the pixels of our layer, and then use mesh to points. We now have a grid of points. Now we import our data, which is our video file, and we are going to use its output to control which points we want to keep by using a compare node and a delete geometry node. And there we go. You see the mapping is a bit weird. Use the grid's UV map to align the image. Changing the frame number will now cycle through each slice of your Z stack. What we need to do now is repeat this operation for every frame of the video. Fortunately, Blender gave us this new tool called a repeat zone. Basically, we want to recreate this inside of that. As an input, we give it the point grid and we'll keep the UV map. Then inside of the zone, we will put the image texture because this is the thing that's going to change at each repetition. Let's pass the grid to our filter like before and get back our points. Now, to accumulate the points of every iteration, we use a join geometry node and join our points with the points from the previous iteration. Two more things we need to do. First, the frame number here, it should be increased at every iteration. So just add one before plugging into the next. Oh, I forgot to tell Blender to keep the UV map of the base grid. Now, we have all the points that are generated at the same level. We want every layer to be moved up a little bit. This corresponds to your Z scale. So we add a transform geometry here and using a vector maths node, we set a Z increment. Now the number here will depend on your specific case. And then we will scale it by the number of the current frame that we get from here. Now we have our cloud of points. I would recommend to bake this and save your file at this point. Now there are a number of options if you want to render this cloud of points. I like using a points to volume node. Yeah, this can be tricky. <laughs> I would recommend to set the render engine to cycles and use GPU if you have one. Okay. And let's add back our points to volume and adjust the voxel size before actually plugging it in. And there we go. Now, you can barely see it, but it's there. I will show you some ways to make it look nice. We add a set material node to be able to modify its look. Let's head out to the shading tab. We will summon the principled volume node. The first thing I'll show you is that you can use the volume data to control the look of the material. First, let's switch off the lights. We're going to use the volume density and plug it into the emission strength. Now you see the denser parts of the volume give off more light. Using a maths node, we can multiply this effect to make it stronger. And you can change the color, for example. What if now you want, let's say, a color gradient? We can use a color ramp node, plug it into emission color. Now to control it, we can use, for example, a geometry input, such as the uh, Z component of the geometry position to, to control this color gradient. Now you have different color based on the location and you can tune it as you will. Sometimes a map range node will help in order to set the spatial boundaries of the gradient. Now, with the exact same trick, I'm going to show you something else. If we use black as a color and set the interpolation to constant, 
we can actually cut into our volume. I know this is something you often want to do with uh, this type of data. And you can do this on any axis, you just have to adjust the mapping maybe. Now let's say I am happy with how this looks. What do you do if you have other channels? Well, it's super easy, we don't need to start everything over. We'll just copy our object, then copy the geometry nodes tree, then just change the video file here. Okay, it's there, and to see it better we will also uh, copy our previous material, and in the shading mode we'll give it a nice green. And there we have our chromosomes. Now probably you will want to spend some time uh, experimenting to see which way is best to display your data. Probably you will have to adjust some of the parameters, you know, with numbers that I here defined uh, by gut feeling, I'd say, for, for this tutorial. Um, like our compare node here, or adjust the materials, uh, so you can see better. Obviously I can't show the full process here without making the video extremely long, but I thought maybe I can leave out some examples and I will screenshot the material settings for you. Now thank you for watching and enjoy!